The Magsaysay Administration 1953 To help the rural masses was the focal point of the populist administration of President Ramon Magsaysay. President Magsaysay insisted in meeting and communicating with his people. In his first executive order, he established the Presidential Complaint and Action Commission, which investigated various citizen complaints and recommended remedial actions through different government agencies. The commission served to boost the nation's confidence with its government. It was seen as a fulfillment of President Magsaysay's promise. The principles of the Magsaysay administration were codified in the Magsaysay Credo and became the theme of leadership and public service. Among the accomplishments of the Magsaysay administration were the Social Security Law of 1954 or Republic Act No. 1161. In an effort to solve the problems of communism and insurgency, President Magsaysay sought to protect the farmers through the creation of laws such as the Agricultural Tenancy Act of the Philippines or Republic Act 1199, the Land Reform Act of 1955 through Republic Act 1400, the formation of the Court of Agrarian Relations through Republic Act 1267, and the National Resettlement and Rehabilitation Administration NARRA through Republic Act 1160. The administration achieved victory over insurgents with the surrender of Huck leader Luis Tarek in 1954. In the field of international diplomacy and defense, President Magsaysay, through the Manila Pact of 1954 or the Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty, led the establishment of the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization CEDO. The Laurel Langley Agreement, signed during the Magsaysay administration, gave the Philippines a preferential trade system with the United States and other countries. Among its provisions were the right to impose quotas on non-quota articles and the right to impose export taxes. However, on March 17, 1957, President Magsaysay and 25 other passengers of the presidential plane Mount Pinatubo perished in a crash at Mount Manungal, Cebu. With this, Vice President Carlos P. Garcia succeeded to the presidency on March 18, 1957. This is the Ramon Magsaysay Award, created in 1957. The highest prize for leadership in Asia. The award is presented every 31st of August, the birth anniversary of President Ramon Magsaysay. The Garcia Administration, 1957 to 61. Pause, 1. President Garcia ran for the presidential elections of 1957. It was the first time in electoral history where there were four serious contenders to the presidency. Namely, José Ulo, Claro M. Recto, Manuel Manahan, and President Garcia. The incumbent president won the elections with 41.3% of the electorate. It was the first time that a president was elected by plurality of candidates instead of a majority vote. It was also the first time where the elected president and vice president did not come from the same political party. President Garcia was a nationalista and vice president Diosdado Macapagal a liberal. The Garcia administration promoted the Filipino First policy, whose focal point was to regain economic independence, a national effort by Filipinos to obtain major and dominant participation in their economy. The administration campaigned for the citizens' support in patronizing Filipino products and services and implemented import and currency controls favorable for Filipino industries. In connection with the government's goal of self-sufficiency was the austerity program, which President Garcia described in his first State of the Nation address as more work, more thrift, more productive investment, and more efficiency. This aimed to mobilize national savings. Also, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act through Republic Act 301 aimed to prevent corruption and promote honesty and public trust. Another achievement of the Garcia administration was the bolan serrano Agreement of 1959, which shortened the term of lease of the U.S. military bases in the country from the previous 99 to 25 years. President Garcia lost to Vice President Diosdado Macapagal in the presidential race of 1961. The Macapagal administration 1961 
President Diosdado Macapagal, during his inaugural address in 1961, emphasized the responsibilities and goals to be attained in the new era. He reiterated his resolve to eradicate corruption and assured the public that honesty would prevail in his presidency. President Macapagal, too, aimed at self-sufficiency and the promotion of every citizen's welfare through the partnership of the government and private sector and to alleviate poverty by providing solutions for unemployment. Among the laws passed during the Macapagal administration were Republic Act 3844 or the Agricultural Land Reform Code an act that established the Land Bank of the Philippines. Republic Act 3466, which established the Emergency Employment Administration. Republic Act 3518, which established the Philippine Veterans Bank. Republic Act 3470, which established the National Cottage Industries Development Authority NACIDA to organize, revive, and promote the establishment of local cottage industries. Republic Act 4156, which established the Philippine National Railways PNR to operate the National Railroad and Tramways. In the field of foreign relations. The Philippines became a founding member of Mifilindo or Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia through the Manila Accord of 1963. The regional organization of Malay states strove for Asian solutions by Asian nations for Asian problems and aimed to solve national and regional problems through regional diplomacy. The Macapagal administration closed with the presidential elections of 1965. The poor boy from Lubao was defeated by the nationalista candidate Ferdinand E. Marcos. The Marcos administration 1965-86. The last president of the Third Republic of the Philippines. The first term of the Marcos administration, as emphasized in his inaugural address on December 30, 1965, focused on the revival of the greatness of the nation. Faced with the challenge of corruption in the government, President Marcos had to reorganize the armed forces, the Philippine Constabulary, and the Bureau of Internal Revenue. In an attempt to solve the problem of technical smuggling, the Bureau of Customs was also reorganized. The administration, with a goal to strengthen the local economy, devised construction programs and irrigation and infrastructure projects. In addition, the promotion of Philippine heritage, culture, and arts was achieved through the establishment of the Cultural Center of the Philippines in 1969. President Marcos won his re-election bid in the 1969 presidential elections against Liberal Party's Sergio Osmeña Jr. With this, President Marcos to become only the second Philippine president in history to win re-election, and the first to do so in the Third Republic. His popularity started to decline due to perceived dishonesty in the 1969 campaign, alleged government corruption, and worsening peace situation, and with the global economic crisis brought about by the rising oil price. The Philippine economy was adversely affected in the 1970s. Aside from economic recession, civil unrest caused by the ascendancy of dirty politics, graft and corruption continued to afflict the nation. There was also the upsurge of communism and subversion. The increasing gap between the rich and the poor became more evident. With this, the 1935 Philippine Constitution was seen by the Marcos administration as unable to cope with the new socio-economic problems of the country. As opposition to President Marcos grew significantly due to corruption in the administration, the Liberal Party then saw an opportunity in the midterm elections of 1971. The Miting de Avance of the Liberal Party held at Plaza Miranda on August 21, 1971 was cut short when two bombs were hurled at the opposition candidates. Because of this incident, President Marcos suspended the writ of habeas corpus, leading to the arrest and incarceration of 20 people. The Plaza Miranda bombing, alongside the increasing strength of the Communist Party of the Philippines and its military wing, the New People's Army, and the Marcos staged ambush on the convoy of Secretary of Defense Juan Ponce en Real on the night of September 22, 1972, were the pretext for Marcos' declaration of martial law on September 23, 1972, by virtue of Proclamation No. 1081. 
This law was declared by the president to save the republic from lawlessness and civil strife. Some sectors believed that President Marcos declared martial law as his second term was about to end. The constitution was suspended. The Congress was dissolved and President Marcos governed by issuing presidential decrees, letters of instruction, and other rules deemed favorable to the society. Under martial law, President Marcos being the chief executive had emergency powers. The president suspended the writ of habeas corpus and curtailed the freedom of speech, press and assembly. He also imposed strict implementation of curfew. Political opponents and detractors were arrested and detained. Among them were Senators Ninoy Aquino, José Diocno and Ramón Mitra, Teofisto Gangona, José Noledo, José Mari Vélez, and journalist Maximo Sullivan. Mass media were closed and placed under military control. Some of them were later permitted to reopen but under strict censorship. Even public utilities and industries were seized and placed under government control. On January 17, 1973, President Marcos signed the 1973 Constitution and thus, such body of laws was put into effect. Mr. Marcos ruled as President and Prime Minister under martial law powers until 1981. The transitory provisions of the Constitution legalized all decrees, proclamations and orders of the President, and extended his term of office beyond 1973. This marked the beginning of the Begong Lipanon, the new society as the martial law regime was called, under President Marcos. Later on, in 1981, through Proclamation No. 2045, martial law was lifted throughout the country. And marked the beginning of the, new, or Fourth Republic of the Philippines. 